previous videos uh, on heat effects, I, in the first video I looked at the steady state energy balance applied to a general reactor and then I went, I took and applied that in the second video to a PFR, PBR, and a CSTR and for those I assumed it was adiabatic. So now we want to look at the case where it might not be adiabatic. So this would be the heat is either added or taken away through the walls of the reactor and this can be done with a cooling jacket or you could have heating coils and so first of all I'm just going to draw the reactor. So this is for a tubular reactor. Basically a, this is going to be the steady state energy balance for a tubular reactor with heat exchange. So we just want to look at one section. Well first of all, so you have flow in, so you have some Fa0 at some temperature, and then you have flow out at some temperature, and you have some ambient temperature here, this would be the temperature in the heat jacket, or cooling jacket, or whatever the temperature is outside. This is delta V, so, so you have some volume here, and then V, and then this is V plus delta V. There's some temperature here. And so what we want to do is uh, energy balance on this volume. And so first of all, I'm going to make a couple of assumptions. First of all, I'm going to assume no radial gradients. And I'm also assuming that the shaft work is zero. So looking at the energy, first of all, we have some Fi Hi in and some Fi Hi out. And this is the flow multiplied by the enthalpy. And so then so then you can just do an energy balance. So this would be you have some change in the energy plus whatever's flowing in here minus whatever's flowing out here and this is equal to zero because we're assuming steady state. So then if you look at delta Q, delta Q is U delta A T A minus T. So this U is the overall heat transfer coefficient and the delta A is the area over the over where the heat transfer is occurring and so if you're confused about this form of this equation I highly recommend going back and reviewing this stuff in the in your heat transfer book. So anyway this can be rewritten as U A delta V multiplied by T A minus T. And then looking at A, well, yeah, so now we have this A. So A is equal to A over V and, or, so the area over the volume. And this is for a tubular reactor. So this is pi dL over pi d squared L over 4, and that is 4 over d, 4 over, four over the diameter. And I'm just going to write that this is for a tubular reactor. And substitute this into here. So if we, and we also want to, we also want to divide by delta V. So if we do that, we get U a T 
TA minus T plus FI HIV minus FI HI Actually, I'm going to stick with the terminology I'm using. So this is V plus delta V. So V plus delta V, and then this is over delta V. And this is equal to zero. So then this can be rewritten as U A T A minus T minus D F, the sum of Fi Hi over dV, and that's equal to zero. So then I want to expand this term, and so if I do that, I get, well, I'm just going to write this. So this is, this would be equal to the sum of d Fi dV Hi minus the sum Fi dHi dV. So I'm gonna I'm gonna actually go over here. So now I can say d Fi dV is equal to the rate, and that's equal to the stoichiometric coefficient multiplied by Ra. And then this d HIDV is equal to CPI DT DV. And the reason why, I already, we, I already showed this in a previous video, but the reason why this is the case is because if you remember, the enthalpy is equal to the enthalpy at some reference temperature plus the integral of the reference temperature to T, C, P, I, D, T. And if you remember, this applies when there's no phase change. So this is another assumption we're making here is that there's no phase change. So then we can plug these things in. And so, because I'll write this over here. So U A T A minus T minus, and then we have the sum of Yeah, the sum of DFI dV, which was this VI minus RA, and then this is multiplied by HI, minus the sum of FI, and then CPI dT dV. This is equal to zero. So I'm going to erase some stuff real quick. All right, so looking at this part right here, first of all, we know that the sum of VI HI is equal to the heat of reaction. So then this can be rewritten as dt db is equal to ra. So I'm basically just solving this for this dt db is equal to ra heat of reaction, and that's from this, minus ua. Actually, I switch signs on this too. T minus TA, and this is divided by the sum of FI CPI. So then looking at this, this would be the heat 
generated and this is heat removed. So this is the energy balance for multiple reactions or so when so if you so you would couple this with each species mole balance so energy balance for multiple reactions. And so if you look at the if you look at table 8-1, this is the table with all of the energy balances and it's on page 476 in this book, The Elements of Chemical Reaction Engineering by Fogler. And this is the, this would be equation number 6 on that table. So now what we want to do is put this equation in terms of conversion because if you're working in terms of conversion instead of molar flow rates, you would want this equation to also be in terms of conversion. And so we can do that. We know that Fi is equal to Fa naught theta i plus Vi x. And this is a this V in this case is the stoichiometric coefficient. So then we can just plug that in for Fi. So if we do that, we have dT dV is equal to Ra, the heat of reaction, minus Ua, T minus Ta, and this is over, so this would be over Fa naught multiplied by the sum of theta i CPI plus the stoichiometric coefficient multiplied by CPI and that's multiplied by X and this is delta CP. So then this is the this is the energy balance this is the energy balance in terms of conversion for a PFR. So energy balance in terms of conversion for a PFR. And this is equation, this is equation 3B on this table 8-1. So then if you wanted to do this for a PBR, DW, you need to put this in terms of DW and this would also work for this equation. So dW is equal to rho B over dV. So then dT dW is equal to Ua over rho B Ta minus T plus Ra prime delta heat of re over Fa naught the sum theta i c p i plus delta c sub p x. So then this is the energy balance in terms of conversion for a PBR. And this is equation number 3a on this table. So in, this e in these equations we're assuming that the heat transfer fluid or the say you have a cooling jacket, we're assuming that the that the temperature in that jacket doesn't change down the length of the reactor. But what if it does? So then we you need an equation to account for that. So I'm going to erase some stuff and then show you how to account for that.